Hey, I am what's left of Kurt Browning, and here are some of my world-class memories, if I can remember them. Never met that kid, don't know. Uh, okay, so the first thing you think of is uh, you start at the bottom and you think hair. <laughs> really, it's just hair. I, I, like, I actually owned combs. I can't believe it. And this is the uh, quad outfit, the first quad in 1988 at the Budapest Championships. I wore that outfit. I think the thing weighed about two ounces and um, it made me feel uh, light and superhero hero heroic. It made me feel good. And that's what I think about when I see that outfit. But really, I used to have hair. <gasps> okay, so this is the same era. This is the World Figure Skating Championships in Paris. And I was cocky enough to think that I was gonna win because I had beaten everyone ranked ahead of me once that year. So I thought if I can come fifth in the short program, um, I'll win the short, no, fifth in figures back when we did figures. If I can come fifth, which I did, and then I'll just win the short and win the long and it'll be easy. That outfit is the short program outfit. Um, and I remember uh, thinking to myself, uh, you know, this is a really important day. And I looked up into the audience and I hit my position in Paris and there was a, a fellow competitor from Canada that was a generation ahead of me. And I, I was like, oh, hi. And I didn't know that you were here in Paris and my music started kind of without me. So literally, little tiny memories like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Halifax, 1990. Everybody that I loved was in the audience live. Um, it was the best. My parents, my friends, best friends, nephew, like my sister and brother, like everybody was there. And so when I ended up winning, the whole house sang Oh Canada with me, 10,000 people. It was a hard week because I had what I thought was athlete's foot and I could barely get my foot in the skate. And I was so embarrassed by having athlete's foot that I didn't tell anybody about it. And I thought that it would be fine. And as it turned out for the long program, I could, I could barely put weight on my foot. It kind of went numb by the time I competed, but it was really throwing me off. And um, somehow everyone else also skated badly. <laughs> and it was not a great skate. And um, you know, the skating gods gifted me with the gold medal in Canada at home. And, uh, and we partied really hard after that. It was pretty good. That was fun. The Italian thing, that's what I called it. Um, so Munich, 1991, I was skating to uh, this music and I, and I was grumpy and I think I was irreverent and a little bit snotty and spoiled <laughs> back then. And I was throwing my toys because uh, I was tired of doing the Italian thing, which is what I called it. But actually it turns out to be one of the most technical skates of my life. Um, triple axle, triple toe, quad toe triple south, triple loop, triple flip, triple toe. It was the first time and only time I think anyone's done three triple triples because they changed the rules after that. So back then, not now, but back then that was a big deal. The most important thing to remember is how bad the haircut was. Um, they had a sponsorship from Vidal Sassoon on the on, on site. And so I went and sat down and got my haircut and they kind of shaved the sides. And then they also had people doing makeup. So I went, I went from the bad haircut to the worst makeup. So you can see around my eyes, I'm, I'm like completely like, you know, Mar Marilyn Manson right there. And uh, so afterwards I saw photos, I was not happy. I was happy with the results, I ended up winning. That doesn't look like me. Oh well. This picture at the time, I had no idea how much it was gonna mean to me in 2024. And, um, you know, I, that, I, what, little known, somebody just flicked a bottle cap and hit me in the eye, but no one knows that. But anyways, um, yeah, Elvis and I have kind of, he went to a different tour and I stayed with Stars and Ice and we didn't see each other for like two decades, really. Then he kind of came back to Stars and Ice and to make a long story short, uh, we've become really good friends. Now we were super good teammates and we were friendly. Um, our families were nervous with each other because he had what I wanted and I had what he wanted. and somebody was gonna win and somebody was gonna lose. And it was always that way. But we, we had a lot of shares of the gold medal back and forth. But I'm happy to say that that dude and I are very different people. Um, but we've become really, really good friends and they're teaching seminars together now. And so I, I, I love the longevity of what's happening in that picture back then and the fact that it's still going strong now. We just looked at, you know, a small chunk of my life that was 
that sort of shaped who I am seen as, you know, and I'm almost 60 and I'm still kind of that person. Um, so, you know, to have the chance to do something wonderfully lucky and, and somewhat exciting for four or five years of your life and then to have that goodness last for the rest of your life, that's what's happening at the World Championships at the Olympics. These, these young people have a chance of skating immortality. Um, so there are often times when I'll look back at that and I don't even know that person. And, and, and the memories have become stories, the memories have become pictures, and I've kind of lost touch with probably reality of what it was like back then. But um, how lucky, how lucky to, to have those moments still be a part of my day today. And look, we're talking about it still. So one of the luckiest people I've ever met is in the mirror. I'm Kurt Browning, still around. And those were some of my world-class memories and